Are you ready for a shortcut? Because I got one for you. So we have learned polynomial division, and it's a very lengthy process. And it's very similar to the way we would divide just regular integers. And there is a shortcut that works when, check this out, this is a linear term, and that coefficient is 1. So this is a linear term that we're dividing by. So our divisor is linear, and there's an understood 1 in the front. So let's get started. Now I'm going to go ahead and just write what's about to happen, and when I do, it always seems overwhelming on the very first one, and people are panicking. Let's go purple. And they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You got this. I'm just going to start writing, and then you're going to start identifying things. And we'll pause right there. Okay. So I think we can very easily identify where the 4, 15, 17, and 24 came from. If you're wondering where this negative 3 came from, it's from this. It's always the opposite, and we've been through this. This is the kind of situation where if I wanted to solve this equation, then I would end up with negative 3. So it's, it's a matter of, well, this could be a factor, potentially, depending on whether or not we have a remainder. But this could be a factor, and this is the root associated with that factor. So this would be like... In factored form, this would show up. But then if I said, now what is the root? You'd say, oh, negative 3. It's that kind of situation. All right, so opposite sign goes here, and then 4, 15, 17, 24. Now things get a little bit confusing because I'm just going to start drawing arrows and multiplying and adding, and it's just going to be fun. But it goes really fast. Once you get past the first one or so, it'll make a lot more sense. So switching to green, just because. Bring down your 4. How do you know this works? It works. This, this really is a shortcut for that long division. The process is really the same. It's just abbreviated. We've left the variables out. So 4. Bring down your 4. Multiply these two together. Negative 3 times 4 is going to be negative 12. Put it in the next column over. Negative 12. All right. What are you going to do with that? We're going to add 15 plus negative 12 or 15 minus 12 is going to give me 3. All right. Multiply. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Put it in the next column over. Add those. 17 plus negative 9 is 8. All right. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. And then I will add 24 and negative 24. And it gives me 0. And the neat thing is this is my remainder. It's always my remainder. It would be great if I could spell it correctly. And so I think I'm going to try to do that. Remainder. There we go. This is my remainder, which means I have no remainder. But now let's look at this from a bigger context. The original problem was x cubed, 4x cubed, divided by x to the first. So just in the, in the broadest sense, what I really had was x cubed divided by x. And there's a bunch of other stuff. But x cubed divided by x was x squared. You don't have to write this part. So my final answer, and I want to erase this because it's distracting from everything else that's about to take place. But my final answer, written in blue, just for fun, <laughs> pick whatever color you want, just for fun. My final answer is 4x squared, for reasons that were just explained over there. Because if I had x cubed, I divided by x, I now have x squared. And we're going to just continue with our coefficients, counting down our exponents. So 4x squared plus 3x plus our constant term plus 0, which is our remainder. And that brings us to the end of your very first synthetic division problem. First one goes a little slow. After that, they speed up.